Hey guys, welcome to the Outer Worlds. I'm Purist, as you can see down the bottom. <laughs> and I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. I know all of you are probably going to be dis uh, probably disappointed that I basically fail. Well, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I thought that, um, <laughs> like, putting on the mods, uh, like the Highlander mod to increase your, um, uh, person's, um, you know, immortality and stuff. I thought that, like, versing against one of those would be, like, challenging, but, like, you know, at a good skill level for me. I didn't know that they would like turn to like literal gods. I mean, I should have probably seen that coming, but anyway. I mean, you can probably guess what I'm going to replace it with, but that's neither here nor there. I'll do it at the um I'll tell you guys about it tomorrow. Anyway, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. You know the drill. You watch YouTube for like, what? Wait, how old is YouTube? At least 10 years old. It's been doing like, for like 10 years. You guys know the drill. Anyway, let's go right back into it. Last time, we basically, um, reunified like, um, the various peoples of Edgewater and Terra 2, and we are about to fucking leave now um in between parts i um i basically well what wait where's my tab inventory okay um yeah i basically sold a bike bunch of stuff now i've got like um i'm pretty well good but wait i only have 100 carry capacity jeez Alright. Anyway. Uh, let's, um... You're very close. You kind of scared me, to be honest, there, Pavati. Yeah, let's do it. I love how fucking blocky... Is this oh. your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Aww. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. <laughs> I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but... Every time I think of going back, I get this... Sinking feeling. I mean... It's fair enough, hey. Like, it's basically a working town. You got you. All you're gonna be doing there is just like fixing, like. Well, it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> you never been on a ship before? Well, obviously she hasn't. She had dingus. Uh, I can understand not wanting to go back. That time was kind of a shithole. Also, you didn't seem happy. Oh, well, it's kind of you to say that. And you're right. Yes. I wasn't happy. I know I, I am. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. Mm-hmm. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? <laughs> yes. Yes, a million times yes. This game is basically Firefly. If you can guess, she is Kaylee, and, um, oh, who's the other one? Max. Max is... Fuck, what's the priest's name? Shepherd Book, that's it. Shepherd Book. Except I... I think, uh, I think Max is a little bit more 
unhinged than Shepard Book ever was. You sure he won't mind? Actually, no. We're glad to have you along. Pick your cabin to yours. Yes. I mean, uh, thanks. We won't He's regret so this. Cute. You fuck, Captain. I can call you Captain now. Yeah. What? I got a captain. Why is she so goddamn cute? I want a fucking. Why are you so fucking creepy? Dude. Alright. I suppose Vicar Max is coming along as well. You can you can also pick a thing. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Uh, I'd like to know something about those I'm flying with. What's the story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run of the mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Violently enthusiastic disposition? Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. <laughs> Why were you so passionate about it? I can guess. You saw it as an escape. From like your drudgery of your real life. I mean that's basically why I do gaming. My parents ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. Oh. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar I could find it. Or at the very least find out why I lacked it. Fair enough. Weren't they proud when you became a vicar? Actu actually, no. Tell me about your religion, because it sound actually does sound really interesting. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. So it's basically science is a religion, basically. It's basically Christianity and science just basically fused this is technically what I believe from like high school actually I, I like internalize science but I also believe that God made the science that made the universe I mean I don't really believe I mean I kind of don't anyway this is this is, this is not about me this is about thingy uh, if you can't help but follow a plan, then anything you do is part of it, right? The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some uh -huh. rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. For some reason, this reminds me of Doctor Who in its interpretation of time. Like, in Doctor Who, it, like, um, there's, like, you can change everything about, like, um, the time in history, except certain Nexus events. Everything around those Nexus events are, um, are flexible. But so long as you cha don't change these 
specific events and that they happen specifically as um as well they happened then apparently time and space breaks down um, i mean it's obviously less uh, it's only on like a personal impact here but you get my point kind of Uh, seems quite trusting of you to just sign on without knowing anything about me. I mean, technically speaking, I don't know anything about me. I run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. Why, just because I have a ship? I guess it makes sense. What about you? What's your story? Well, I was a colonist on the Hope. A scientist named Well saved me. And how did he do that? Uh, he stole my body from the Hope at the edge of the colony and threw me out. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What mm -hmm. are you going to do now? Well, ultimately, I need to help him recover more of the chemicals that he needs to save the rest of the people on the ship. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Just because this is the right thing to do. A commendable attitude. Uh, what's about that book? Bokonu, the author, yes? had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Alright, I know about uh, scientism, what's a philosophist then? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Huh. Wait. This kind of reminds me of, there's like two different sets of thought of what, like, what happens at like the subatomic scale. There's like quantum gravity, which I don't understand, and cosmic strings, and string theory, which I also don't understand. I don't know why it reminds me of that, <laughs> actually. I'm just talking out of my ass. Please ignore me. Yeah, I see where we can find someone who speaks this French. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Sounds like a bit of a long shot. What makes you so sure? Oh, I'm anything but certain, but it's all I've got at the moment. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Uh -huh. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. Okay. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. The right. easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. How is it a simple figure happens to be a higher skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular <sighs> penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems.
Alright, but how would a crew manifest to help us track down your scholarly friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. Fair enough. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. Alright. Now. That's the wrong way. It is. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. You're right. What can I do for you, Captain? I have the power regulator. Why do you want me to plug it? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yes. Of course, I just... I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Yay. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. Thank you. I'll be back. You shouldn't be up here. Shouldn't you guys be like, you know, settling in instead of following me around? Alright. I've forgotten how to climb. There we go. Oop. Ooh. I thought I turned those off. God damn it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that in between. Anyway. Rumble, 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 base, rumble. Jump. Who needs ladders? I should have used the ladder. What can I do for you, Captain? I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Yes, hope we don't crash. Let's get out of here. Ooh. Install odds the unreliable takes we flight. We received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Gotta be waiting to hear from him. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. Thank I you. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. Eh. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing. I assure you. Did you just say drippage? Uh, I've been a tiny bit lightheaded sometimes. Oh, yeah, I can slow down time too. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it though. I'm sure you're fine. Great. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, <laughs> find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the ground breaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Alright. Why do I need a nav key to land on planets? Can I just, you know, land like he did on Edgewater? Oh, it's Terra Sue? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. 
Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your mm -hmm. navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kalkelly. <laughs> right, the Black Marketeer. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Uh, can I just land somewhere outside of Stella Bay? What's to stop me? In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Kelly. I mean... What's stopping me from just leaving housing? I'm guessing this ship doesn't have a skip drive. Without a skip drive? Yeah. Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Alright, let's have a word with Miss Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, yes. I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting Ooh. edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the captain's quarters. You want to explain what that is? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. You mentioned this thing has limitations? I assume it has, like, time limits or something? Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Ah. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Yeah. Movement makes it more likely. Okay. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Why do I need a gadget with this? Can't I just steal the uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? Okay. The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. How the fuck does a hologram sweeten my breath? Science, that's how. Okay. I'll put it to good use. Thanks, Doctor. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. Okay. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Alright, got it. Level up! Okay. Let's...
level up the stealth to three. Um, can I go ranged or should I get this out now? Why do I just have it? Actually, no, we've got to look. One, two, three. And I'll put the rest in this. There we go. Yes. Soon. Oh no, this is just like Fallout New Vegas. You only get like a perk at like every second level or something. Yeah, right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Right. Um, no. Ooh. Oh, that's cool. I love space. Space is so cool. Anyway. Uh, navigation terminal. Oh, this is the system, is it? Typhon, that is where... The unreliable is orbiting, actually. It's a blank space here. Hmm. Hephaestus. AG534. Hephaestus. Closest planet to the sun. The Hephaestus Mining Company was first to establish outposts here. And as such, has claimed the planet for itself. Tartarus. Named for its hellish atmosphere, Tartarus is where the board maintains the maximum security penal complex known as the Labyrinth. Stop this not like a Minotaur. Terra 2. AG332. Terra 2. An idyllic terrestrial planet. Halcyon's wealthiest elite live in its capital city, Byzantium. While the colony's laborers live in corporate owned townships along the frontier. Byzantium. That's a cool name. Groundbreaker. Independent orbital station in the remains of Halcyon's first colony ship, captained by John Le Tennyson, and run by descendants of the original crew. Cool. Monarch. AG 111A. Monarch. One of Olympus's many satellites. What should have been Halcyon's second habitable world has long since been abandoned by the board due to the monstrous, ravenous creatures. Olympus. Lattice of Halcyon's two Jovian gas giants. Perpetual storms wrecked the planet's atmosphere, rendering it un un uninhabitable. Also, it's a gas giant. Eridanus. Uh, AG211. Halcyon's second Jovian gas giant. Its atmosphere is rich with hydrogen, helium, and various noble gases. Distillation plants in the atmosphere harvest those gases for energy. And Scylla. Scylla is one of the largest asteroids orbiting Halcyon, the largest in a grouping of rocks known as the Chiribitis Cluster. Have faced this mining once claimed the asteroid, but its prospecting site was abandoned long ago. Hmm. Alright. Let's go. Oh, Phineas's lab. An abandoned asteroid facility located in the rings of Terra 2. Refocused into experimental laboratory, living quarters, and hideout of Phineas Vernon Wills. Okay, let's go to the Groundbreaker, then. Load to the system map. Well, points of interest. 
If you ship to any location you've unlocked, those some landing base require special codes and keys before they allow you to land there. Left at the groundbreaker. It doesn't look like we've docked. We're just hovering outside it. Anyway. Can we check? Yeah, sure. Ooh. Yep. Hey, Captain. Yep. I heard that Groundbreakers got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? Uh. What about her? I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. I mean. I thought you said you could keep this boat in good repair, though. I absolutely surely can. I'm a passing fair mechanic. <laughs> Even Mr. Thompson would have said it's my only skill. But I'm used to working on cannery lines, AG loaders and the like. Uh -huh. There's tricks about ships I ain't learned yet. All I'm looking for is a few pointers. I bet a lady who runs a whole station has forgot more than I ever learned. You want to join, leave my crew and join hers? Or what? Gosh, no, Captain. I, I aim to stay so long as I'm welcome. I figured June Lay and I could confabulate over wireless or by message. And maybe when we put into Groundbreaker, I could stop by to visit her sometimes. But only when you don't need me with you. Sure, we can head over to engineering. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? Uh, ah, big time is over. All right, I think we'll leave that there. Tomorrow we shall move aboard the Groundbreaker, as well as at the end of the episode, you will find out what I'm replacing um, Crusade Kings three with. Uh, two guesses, and the first one doesn't count. <laughs> anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed. I've been Purist. Signing off.